Math 230, Quest to College. I'm Joe Vasta, and we are going to be studying section 3.3, the conditional. So we're continuing with logic. Before we get to that, let's do the puzzle. Show you the puzzle. Which word does not belong? So there's five words there. Spot, scat, pots, stop, and post. So we'll take care of that at the end. Just the other thing that we want to show you that has a little to do with logic is this. The statement on the other side of this line is true. So here's a line here. The statement on the other side of this line is false. So as another puzzle, you can ponder this. What are the implications? The conditional. Okay, so this is a very important operator in logic. And um, let's get into the definition. The operator, if then, so it all goes together. And there's a dot, 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 so some things are going to go there. That is called the conditional. It is denoted by an arrow. Okay, you put statement P on the left, statement Q on the right, and when that happens, P is called the hypothesis, Q is called the conclusion. And sometimes people use different names for those. So what we want to do when we learn a new operator is we want to go from words to symbols and symbols to words. So that's going to be what you're going to do in your homework first. So here it goes. Statement S is the baby stinks. Statement Q is the baby is quiet. Statement D is dad leaves. You may be able to pause the video and see if you can jot down the answers. So for the first three, you're supposed to write symbols. And for the fourth one, you have to write the statement in words. Okay, let's go ahead and do this. If the baby stinks, then dad leaves. So you've got the simple statements. Here, we'll use colors here. Uh, the baby stinks. We better change colors to this one right here. Baby stinks. And then dad leaves. So here we have the baby stinks is statement S. And where the arrow goes, that's always going to be on the then part. So the baby stinks. There's the then. Then. Dad leaves. So we're going to put D. So that's how you go from words to symbols with the conditional. So this is called the conditional. If then is what we call it, but conditional is the formal name like um, the conjunction, the disjunction, the negation are formal names, but we say and or not. And then this is if then. If the baby is quiet, baby is quiet, then the baby does not stink. Note the word not. Okay, so let's write the symbol for the baby is quiet. The baby is quiet is Q then the baby does not stink. So the baby stinks is S. The baby does not stink is not S. So there's the answer to problem number two. So it's going to start off pretty simple when you're doing your homework. It will get a little bit more complicated, but just um, listen to this lecture and you'll be able to do your homework. If the baby stinks and is not quiet. Okay, so this is actually, we have the baby stinks. We have, and 
is not quiet, the baby is not quiet, then dad does not leave. Dad does not leave. So it's funny with logic, you can use your operators to, you start off with simple statements, like these simple statements, and you can build more complicated statements using and, or, not, and now our new one, if, then. So, if the baby stinks and is not quiet. So let's just write the baby stinks and is not quiet. The baby stinks is S and capital A, but without the, the cross beam there. Baby stinks and is not quiet. The baby is not quiet. We're gonna go not tilde Q. Now, all of this is part of the hypothesis of our conditional, so we're gonna put parentheses around that. And some of you might be looking below and seeing that, oh yeah, look, that one has parentheses around the conclusion. Then, that's where the arrow goes. Then what? Then dad does not leave. So there's a not there, so we're gonna say, not D. And there's the answer to that one. It almost seems like we're doing worthless stuff in this math class, but logic is going to be the most important thing you see in the math class, and um, the most important thing will be in the next section in terms of um, truth values of conditionals and we get into more stuff. Okay, now here we're going from symbols to words. So hopefully, maybe you can write this out. And we'll start. It says tilde Q. So this is arrow tells me I'm going to start off with an if. If. If what? If the baby is not quiet, then dad leaves or the baby stinks. So I'm going to write that down. So tilde Q is the baby is not quiet. And with the if then statement, we always like to put the comma right there, right before we write the then. And you, you notice that in those, those top sentences. So we have then, and then we write this out here. Um, and they're grouped together after the then, so we don't need any commas besides this one right here. Dad leaves. Or the baby stinks. So there's my answer. I'm going to box the answer. It's quite a big box here. And that's how you go from words to symbols and symbols to words. Now what we want to do is analyze the truth value of the conditional statement. And this is where some of you are going to have to pay attention. It's not as obvious if you've never studied this. So instead of the penny and quarter example, I am going to use a new example for P and Q. I want to call them P and Q because those are classical letters. It's like X is the classical letter in algebra. So I mean, I didn't call this T and I didn't call this P, P for P for pay. I'm just going to call them P and Q. And what we're going to do is we're going to construct the truth table of the conditional. Now, really what I should do is say, here's the truth table of the conditional. It's a definition, accept it. And if you don't like it, accept it, okay? But I'm gonna go ahead and drive this table with you because I think we all bring in a little logic when we come into this class. We all have that built into us or some, some partly built into us. Okay, so let's go ahead and do our truth table. We'll put a line right here. Let's put P, Q, and then the um, what we want to derive is we want to derive P, 
then q. Okay. So what is this? What does this really say? It says if, let me write it out, if I win the lottery tomorrow, comma, then I'll pay each of you $100. Now it was funner to do this example when we were, when I was teaching classes face to face because, you know, everybody was like, are you going to play the lottery and give us $100 and, well, yeah, okay, so think of this as a promise. If I win the lottery tomorrow, then I'll pay each of you $100. And we're going to analyze this promise. Okay? So we're going to start off when P is true and Q is true. Okay. So this is kind of a weird situation, but let's just think of this as a promise. So suppose P is true where I win the lottery tomorrow. And Q is true, I come back and I pay each of you guys $100. Did I break the promise? And the answer is no, I kept the promise. I did not break the promise. So if true, then true is true. So now we're going to add to our arithmetic facts of logic. We had 10 of them with the ands, ors, and nots. And now we have the if then. Okay, the next one. So suppose I win the lottery tomorrow, that's true, but statement Q is false. I, I'll pay each of you $100. I end up not paying you any money. The question then is, did I break the promise? And the answer to the question is, yes, I did break the promise, because this was a promise. If I win the lottery, then I'll pay each of you $100. So if true, then false is false. Okay, now it's going to get a little weird. Suppose I win the lottery tomorrow is false. But then I'll pay each of you $100 Let's, let's say that's true. So this is what happens. I don't win the lottery, but I pay each person in this class $100. Did I break the promise? And you might go, well, that was weird. And you might feel uncomfortable for getting the $100 and I didn't win the lottery, but I did not break the promise. The promise says, if I win the lottery, I'll pay each of you $100. So if false than true actually is true. Okay, so that might shock people, but it is what it is. If you don't like it, then I'm going to go back to saying it's the definition accepted. Okay, the last one is what, what most likely will happen. Both statements are false, which means I do not win the lottery and I don't pay any of you guys money. Did I break any promises? And the answer to that question is, no, I did not break promises. So if false, then false is true. So what have we got here? We've got our truth table. So I'm going to write this down. Truth table. of the conditional. I'll just do that. Okay. Um, some books, we'll just say here's the truth table of the conditional. It's a definition. Okay. I tried to show you maybe using the fact that this could be a promise. Why that might make sense. This is a video and we can't have interaction within this video. So there may be some of you who are just like, oh, I don't know. Maybe you went back and played what I said on these ones like five times. Maybe I didn't say things most efficiently. 
But anyway, it is what it is. It's a definition. Some books will say the conditional, there's only one time it is false. So it's false only when P is true and Q is false. So some books will say, here's the um, definition of the truth values of the conditional. They'll just say something like that, and they won't even do a table. Well, that's true. That kind of covers this whole table just within one line. Here's another thing that we might be wondering about is this. True, then false. And we have false then true. Now remember when we had like the cup or the cap, the um, the or or the and, and we can just interchange them. And we said they were commutative. Well is the arrow commutative? Well here's the deal. If false then true, sorry that's this one right here, if false then true is true, and if true then false is false. So these guys are not the same. And maybe I should have a double arrow with a, well anyway, I'm trying to illustrate the fact that arrow is not commutative. And so when you're doing AND and OR, you can be a little sloppy when you're doing your truth table. But when you're doing a truth table with the arrow, which we'll be doing later in this lecture, we cannot be sloppy. We have to make sure we go in the same order of which we see it, because arrow is not commutative. Commutative, once again, means like, you know, 3 plus 5 equals 5 plus 3. Addition is commutative. But if then is not commutative. And so there is the definition. This is something we're going to have to remember. Um, some people say if it's like a promise, if the hypothesis is false, you know, right when you say if false, then the whole statement's going to be true. Which is weird because we usually don't do that when we're, when we're first studying this and there are going to be some weird statements you're going to see. So let's go ahead and Turn it to some examples. Okay, here are four examples, and what do they ask you to do? Well, this is just like the homework. They ask you to find the truth value. Okay, so number one is just do you remember this arithmetic fact um, from logic? And there now are 14 of them. Okay, if true, then true. Well, if true, then true, what is the value of that statement? The value of that statement happens to be true. So we have that. Okay, now we're going to get a little crazy with our statements. You can connect any two statements together with the if then, and that's what we did right here. If cows can fly to the moon on their own. Okay. So right there is a simple statement. Then I'm the Pope. So when they ask you to find the truth value of if-then statements, especially when they get more complicated than this, and they have hands and ors in them, it can sometimes be overwhelming. But if we come back to truth values, the definitions of the truth tables, it's not as bad. So let's analyze it this way. If cows can fly to the moon on their own, well, cows can fly to the moon on their own happens to be false. When I used to teach this class, I just said, cows can fly to the moon. And then I would say it was false, and then a student would raise their hand, I think one time, and he's all, well, we can make it happen. We can put them in a spaceship and fly them to the moon. And then so I had to change this to cows can fly to the moon on their own. Okay. So that's a false statement. 
I'm the Pope. Now I know this is an online class, and you're like, I've never met you. Maybe you are, and, and there's something secret we don't know about the Pope. Well, I'm not. Okay, so I'm going to say that's a false statement. So look what I have. If false, then false. <laughs> that's, that's quite a long arrow, but we got to remember what the truth value of that is. If false already, we already know maybe what it is. You can go back and look on the, the truth table. If false, then false happens to be true. And the objections I get when I teach this face-to-face -face is like, wait a minute, you just said you were the Pope. I did not say I was the Pope. I said this whole statement was true. If cows can fly to the moon on their own, then I'm the Pope, is a true statement. And then this is when other people go, oh, this logic, it's useless, and it's not. All math and other things are built on logic. Let's continue. Here's the next statement. If 8 plus 2 equals 10, then January is a planet. So I'll underline the hypothesis and the conclusion. Okay, we'll just analyze that. The first part, the hypothesis. Does 8 plus 2 equal 10? Is that a true statement? Yes, it is. So this is true. Then we replace the then with an arrow. Then January is a planet. Well, that's false. So you can look back on that truth table, but this is the one time where we end up getting a false. If true, then false equals false. So that is a false statement. If 8 plus 2 equals 10, then January is a planet. And once again, you're sitting there going, man, I would never say this to my friends. Well, you might if you want them to leave and you're getting sick of them. Um, but this is what usually happens in a logic class. You have these weird statements. Okay, maybe you can pause the video and analyze this one here. Okay, if there are 31 days in February, then this is Quest to College. Okay, if you're looking at this YouTube video and you don't know which college this is from, then this, this guy right here, the conclusion, is a true statement. So I'm going to give you that right there. Okay, the hypothesis. There are 31 days in February. That happens to be false. Now we're going to analyze the whole statement. If false, then true. Well, we already have if false. So we're pretty much set there with knowing what the answer is. If false, then true happens to be a true statement. So if there are 31 days in February, then this is Quest to College is a true statement. Now, is it a statement that is going to bring value to your life? No, but it is a true statement. And so the conditional really is when things start getting a little bit weird, but all of this is legitimate. This is logic. A lot of people are learning this. So let's go ahead and do another few problems where we're finding the truth value. And all these problems will seem a little bit familiar because we did them when we um, did the last section. Find the truth value when P is false and Q is true. So we're substituting those into those letters and, and simplifying this. So let's go ahead and do this. We have P is false and Q is true. So I'm just doing a substitution into those letters and then we have not and then P is false. Okay, so when you have something like this, what you wanna do is you want to simplify the hypothesis Simplify the conclusion. You can be doing that independently and then analyzing that error. Okay, so that's how you do this problem. This one we'll talk about as we, we get closer. So I'm going to do inside the parentheses here. And I have not true is what I do first. So not true is false. Now I could simplify the right hand side. I'll just keep it like that for now. So now we're going to get rid of these parentheses by evaluating false and false. So this is where you should know your ands 
and your ors and all the other ones too. False and false equals false. So we have if false, then not false. Okay. So now we want to analyze this not. Okay. Not false is true. And we're almost done here. So this is the new one. This is what we have to memorize. If false, then true. So this is based on the lie. If the um, hypothesis is just a false, we already know that this is going to be true. There it is. Let's go ahead and do problem number two. Maybe you can pause the video and see if you can do this one on your own. Okay, so I'm going to replace the P's and Q's with um, falses and trues. So this is false, then not true, then, and then we have not false, then not true. Woo! Okay, so we want to um, simplify inside these parentheses, and we'll, we'll do those at the same time on this problem. Okay, so for this set of parentheses, the first thing that you want to do is the not. So the not really is stronger than the arrow. Okay, so we have false, then, and then not true is false. Over here, we're going to um, analyze the negations. So not false is true. And then we have not true is false. Okay, now we're working on the parentheses. Okay, so the hypothesis of this big statement here is if false, then false. So if false, then false is true. You can look back on that truth table that we gave as a definition. And then we have this arrow right here, which I'll bring down right there. If true, then false. So that was the one instance where the conditional spits out a false. So if true then false gets replaced with that. And then look at this final statement. If true then false is actually going to be a false. And that completes this problem. Let's go take a look at the next thing here. So you might be thinking, well, this is dumb that we're doing this. And um, I could have picked an example of um, going to a government form, like maybe a tax form or something. And sometimes you're doing those forms and it says like, if you're 18 and you own a cat or whatever, go to line 22. And you know, those can be pretty confusing. But now that we know logic, we can answer a more complicated question like this using the skills that we've just learned. So here's school policy. If you are 20 years old and a student, or not an instructor, or a female but not a cat owner, then the school will give you a parking pass and a library card. So there's the school policy. I don't think it's really the school policy, I just made this up. Okay, now here's the situation and then you know now we go to court and we have lawyers and this is why lawyers have to know their logic inside out. Maria is an instructor and a student who is in her 30s and doesn't have any pets. The school gave her a library card, but not a parking pass. Did the school break its policy? Eeks. Okay, so that sounds pretty confusing. This is very confusing. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some simple statements here that we have from the school policy and just break them down. Look, you are 20. So I put that as statement T. You are a student, statement S. So I just kind of went through this and put those statements down. Um, you are an, an instructor, I made it I. Okay, I didn't say you are not an instructor because then that will be tilde I. Um, you are female, you own a cat, um, school will give you a parking pass, school gave parking pass, and school gave library card. So let's analyze the situation with Maria here. Maria is an instructor. Okay, so statement I is true. And a student. Statement S 
is true. Who is in her 30s, okay, so statement T, you are 20. So for Maria, statement T is false and doesn't have any pets. Okay, so you own a cat for Maria, that is false. Also, we have Maria, and we're going to assume you are female, we're going to say true for that. Okay, the school gave her, and look at the way it's written, there's a her there, so, you know, we put a true there, a library card, but not a parking pass. School gave parking pass, is false for Maria. School gave library card, is true. Okay, so I have these simple statements and have some truth values. Did the school break its policy? So let's write down the policy in symbols. If, okay, so this is gonna be an arrow. You are 20 years old and a student, comma. Okay, so this is part of the hypothesis. Or, so I'm going to put an or here. Not an instructor, comma. So, tilde I. Or, so we're going to put an or here. A female, but not a cat owner. So, but is the contrasting and. So, female, which is F, and not a cat owner, tilde C. Then, so this whole part right here is the hypothesis. Then, so we have the then. The school will give you a parking pass and a library card. Parking pass and, and I'll do a script L, library card. Okay, so you're trying to figure out that, that the school break its policy. All we have to do is plug the um, truth values into this statement here and analyze to see what happens. What is the truth value of this big statement? Are you going to get anything this bad in your homework? Absolutely not. This example is just to show you that there is some use to logic. So I'm going to go ahead and place those values in there. So this is false and true. Wait, did I do that right? She is a, you are 20, oh yeah, you're 20, okay. So I was thinking teacher, okay, no, no, that's correct. False and true. And then we have not true, and we have or, and then this one's gonna be true and not false. So all I'm doing is replacing the C with a false. And then we have this right here. And then we have false and true. Okay, so let's go ahead and analyze. You know, we can start analyzing this hypothesis. We'll simplify that, simplify that, and simplify that. We'll, we'll get this done quickly. So false and true equals false. Or not true equals false. Or I'm going to skip a step here so no one tell anybody. Not false. We do that first. So that's true. True and true gives me true. Okay, so that's the hypothesis. And then over here we have false and true is false. We analyze this false or false, which is false. And then we have or true, which is true. Remember, or is not as strict. True, then false. True, then false equals false. So notice that once we wrote the school policy in simple, then it was all just the definition of the truth values of and, or, not, and if then. And so the answer to this, did the school break its policy? The answer is yes. 
the school did break its policy, and they should have not done that. Okay, let's continue with the conditional. The next thing that we're going to do with the conditional is we're going to do two problems where we write the truth table. So let's go ahead and write the truth table. I like to make um, the bar along the top in thick pen, and I didn't bring my thick pen, but I have one over here. So just walking around the room, hopefully that doesn't freak people out on this. And um, we're going to go ahead and make a line. There we go. And we'll put my header row right above the line. So what do we have? Okay. So here it goes. We have this statement here. It says P or not Q. Now I forgot to say the if, didn't I? So technically we should say if P or not Q, then P. Now when you work with logic a lot, sometimes you don't say the if. Now if I ask you to write it in words, you have to say the if if you're asked to write something in words. But sometimes when I'm reading this off, I'll say P or not Q, then P. Okay, so we're trying to build this structure here, and what's the first thing we need? Well, we count the number of letters, and it, it looks like there's three, but there's a repeat there. So we really have just P and Q. And some of you might say, I'm going to pause the video and see if I can do this on my own, because we already covered truth tables. The new thing is this if then. Okay, so we've got to remember that this is true. This is false. And in the Q column, haha, what am I doing? Okay, that's not how I start off, is it? Why am I doing that? Okay. This is true. This is true. Okay. So I'm going to alternate the Qs by ones. True, false. True, false. And I'm going to alternate the P column by twos. So true, true, false, false. And that covers all four bases. This right here is what you would see on any truth table that has two letters P and Q in it. Now I'm going to go ahead and build my um, headers for the columns. So the next thing I need, I'm going to work inside the parentheses. I need a not Q. Okay, so I have that. And then I'm going to do this whole hypothesis, which is P or not Q. So now I have the hypothesis built and the conclusion's already there. We have we have the P column. So now I'm going to put the whole enchilada. So watch this. P or not Q then P. Okay, so I have three columns to fill out. Once again walking around the room because I forgot something here. I forgot my bugs. So here's my bugs. Well, there's one of them because all we're going to do is do the negation of Q. So the negation of true, false, true, false is false, true, false, true. Okay. So now what am I going to do? I'm going to go P or not Q. So here's P and not Q we just created. So we have true or false, and this is why we have to um, be good with this arithmetic here. True or false is true. True or true is true. False or false? False. False or true is true. Okay, the next one. This is the if-then, so this is where we have to be extra careful. How is that? Because this is the if part, or the hypothesis, then this bug is on the then part. Now here's the deal. You've got to do it in the correct order. So let me just remove the bugs and mention that maybe this is the one you do first, and that's the one you do second. If you mess this up, it will mess up your truth table. So watch this. Oh, okay, so the if then is only false when you have if true, 
than false. Otherwise, it's going to be true. So watch this. If true, then true. That is true. If true, then true. That is true. I know what you're thinking. It doesn't seem to make a difference on this, but we're not done. If false, and already, if, if we were in class, I would say, you can just interrupt me. Once I say if false, you should just say true. If false, then false is true. If true, then false, that happens to be false. And this is the final column of the truth table. Um, note, if we had done it the other way and said if true, then true, if true, then true, if false, then false, if false, then true. If we had done it the other way, this would have been four trues. Sometimes it would even be more devastating. If the if then happens early on in this problem, then mistakes that happen early on propagate and become more mistakes. So when you do these truth tables with the if then, you have to be careful who's first and who's second because if then is not commutative. Let's go ahead and do another truth table. And then we'll move on to some other things. Okay, problem number two. Do the truth table for this statement here, and maybe you can pause the video and see if you can do that. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do, I've got to turn it sideways so I can get this line correct. Draw a long line there. There it is. I, I see how many letters they have, and it looks like there's four letters, but oh, P's repeat it, so I'm going to have three letters. They're going to be P. Q, R. Make them in alphabetical order. It's just a convention. And then with R, I'm going to alternate by ones. There will be eight rows in this truth table, not counting the header rows. So watch this. True, false, true, false, true, false, true, false. Okay. Column Q is going to alternate by twos. So, I mean, I always start off with true, true, true for the first one. So, alternate by twos, we have true, true, false, false, true, true, false, false. And then this column here alternates by four. So, if you saw the last video, you know what's happening. If you didn't see the last video, what are you doing watching this one? I'm throwing some conditionals to at you, you know. If you did, then this. Okay. There it is. So this is what you see all the time when you have three different letters. You see that, so that will always be the same. We talked about how you can write this in any order, but you probably want to write it in this order um, if you want to have any friends left in this world. Um, also, so you can correct your answer quickly in your homework, because that's the order I'll always use. There's another reason why this order is important, and we'll get into that um, later on, beyond chapter two. Let's build this structure. Okay, so what do you see in this structure? You see, well, there's the hypothesis, which needs to be built along with the conclusion. Now, this is something we didn't mention in the last video, but there is some freedom in terms of the order of some of the columns. Meaning, okay, so I'm gonna just do this on purpose. I look in here, and even though this is the last part, this is the conclusion, I'm gonna go ahead and put a negation P column. And then I look over here and I see a what? Negation Q. So whenever I see those in a statement, I like to put those right after. But that's just a style. That's just my preference. You know what some of you would have done? So what some of you would have done is you would have put um, the not Q right there. And then the next column would have been P and not Q. 
And then you, over here you would have put a not P. Now, is that correct? Yeah, there's, there's different ways you can order the columns on some of these problems depending on your style. But really what you need for your final column is always going to be that right there. So as long as that will be your final column, then you should get the same final truth values that I get when I do it this way. So I want to make that clear. I did not make that clear in section 3.2, but I'm trying to make it clear right now. So not P, not Q. I just like to put those there. If there was a not R somewhere, I'd, I'd put that next. Okay, now let's build the um, hypothesis. So it looks like I'm ready to build it. P and not Q. So P and not Q. And it has parentheses around it, so I'll put parentheses around there. And then the next one, well, we're done building the, hy um, the hypothesis, so now let's build the conclusion. Can we build the conclusion? Well, almost there. We've got to do the parentheses first. So not P, then R. Not P, then R. Okay, so that's the next column. And then we're not fully done with the conclusion because we have a negation in front of that. So watch this. Negation, not P, then R. Okay, so I have the hypothesis done. It's right there. And here's the conclusion. Why <laughs> I keep calling them the hypothesis and the conclusion. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> I kept, I was thinking that that was an error. I don't know. I think I need to go get my eyes examined. That's a cup. So this is not the hypothesis and this is not the conclusion. I'm sorry I said that. Um, I'll repeat what I may have said before. If I want to be a perfectionist about my videos, then um, I'd still be working on the first video. So I just have to keep going and know that that's going to be on YouTube where I was calling this the hypothesis and this the conclusion, even though that's an or, so I shouldn't do that. So this is the first part, this is the second part. I've got those done and now I'm going to or them together. Look, I'm using or as a verb. So there's another thing people can ding me on. We have P, okay, so this is the whole enchilada actually that I'm writing here. And so here it is. Another thing that crossed my mind is I don't wanna make these videos too good because then the administration will come along and say, we don't need you anymore, Joe. We've got your videos, and then they kick me out. And it's like an episode from the Twilight Zone. And um, so we gotta throw some mistakes in. Some of these videos, I, I actually have to make, make them blurry on purpose just to keep the man out of, out of my way so I can keep a job, I guess. Okay. Not P. Let's get the, the bug out. Okay, not P. P is four trues, four falses. So not P is four falses and four trues. Not Q. Well, Q is true, true, false, false, true, true, false, false. So not Q is going to start off with false, false, true, true, etc. Okay, so we have that done, and now what I want to do is I want to and the P column with the not Q column. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm adding anding those two columns together. So let's see if we can do that. True and false is false. Remember, and is strict. True and false is false. And we have true and true. True and true, false and false, false and false, false and true, false and true. So the rest are falses. And so that completes that column. We only have um, three more columns to go. So let's do the next one. The next column is not P, then R. Okay, so look at this, not P then R, you gotta do the arrow in the correct order. 
I'm going to take these bugs off. I'm going to put a first there. Now I'm correctly saying that the not P is the hypothesis this time and that the R is the conclusion. So this is the second. So I'll just write that there. I mean, it's not going away because I wrote it in ink, but here it goes. So we have if false. So already you already know what that is. If false than true, uh, if false than true is, let's use the red pen there, true. If false then false, true. Anytime it starts off with it, if false, then it's true. If false then true is true. If false then false is true. Okay, now we'll slow down. If true then true, true. If true then false, that is false. If true then true is true. If true then false is false. Now remember, people use truth tables to verify two statements are equivalent. We'll do more of that in the next section, actually. Okay, so we have that column taken care of. And now what are we going to do? Now we're going to do the negation of what we just created. Which is this guy right here. So the negation of true, 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 false, true, false is going to be false, 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 true, false, true. Okay. So we only need one bug when we're doing the negation. And then we're going to or these two statements together, the one that I was calling the hypothesis and the conclusion, but it's not. We're going to or those guys together. So let's get two bugs back out because now we're doing an or. And we have um, this guy right here. He's the one we just created, and P and not Q. Notice this statement has all four of the symbols that we've learned. We have the and, we have the or, we have some nots, and we have the arrow. So this hopefully is a good example. So or is not as strict as the and. False or false is false. False or false is false. True or false, true. True or false? True. False or false? This is enlightening. Maybe you're sitting in your apartment and your roommate is like, what are you watching? He just keeps saying true, false, false, true, and you can turn to your roommate and say, true. I don't even know if what I'm saying is funny anymore. So um, maybe that's a good thing. <laughs> okay, false. I've just lost my train. Where is it? I lost my train of thought. I'm doing ors. False or true is true. False or false is false. False or true is true. Okay, we got through this truth table. We're not going to be doing truth tables the whole time in this class. And so most people are like, yes, he said what I wanted to hear. And there's like three people are like, oh man, I love this. I want to do this for a living. I don't, I've never run across anybody who's said I want to um, do truth tables for a living, but I'm sure there's people out there who have that philosophy. There's your truth table. Because I'm a creature of habit, I'm going to um, circle my final column. Just because I'm used to saying, okay, there's the result. That is what it is. And if I had another statement with P's, Q's, and R's, and I wanted to see if that statement was equivalent to this statement, I would be putting that on a truth table and comparing the final columns, like we did in the last lecture. OK, so practice those truth tables in your homework. And let's talk about some other things. There are actually more operators. Since this is an introduction to logic, we're not going to really get into those operators. In the book, there are some problems that have stars by them. That, that, that's just for people who want to see do more challenging problems and they have some of those operators. More operators, the common ones are the exclusive or. So either or. And here's a, a symbol that's used sometimes. It, it's a plus with a circle around it. And so either true or true actually is false. So this is an operator where you put two trues, you know, put one on each side and you end up getting a false. 
the biconditional is the if and only if. Okay, that's an important one that we see in higher math classes. We have neither nor, because, unless, and it just keeps going. And all those operators, they are built using those three operators. Remember, these are your fundamental, I'll abbreviate, operators. Your fun operators. <laughs> okay, so everything can be built using those three operators, including the arrow. So we can actually say something with if and then without saying if and then, but using these guys. And the answer is yes. We're going to find that out in 3.4. Okay, let's go ahead and show you the next one. I'm trying to rearrange my paper here. Got this right here. Let if P then Q be a conditional statement. A lot of math people like to say this. Let that happen. Okay, we, we're, we have some definitions here. We're almost done with this section. The converse of this statement, if P then Q, is changing the hypothesis with the conclusion. So the converse is if Q then P. The inverse of this original statement, so there's an inverse, it's not switching them around, it's negating them. And then the one that's the hardest to say in the most letters is the most complicated. It happens to be swapping them, like the converse did. See, we swapped them and we negated them. Okay, so um, this is called the converse, the inverse, the contrapositive. And so any statement that's a conditional, we can ask, hey, what is the converse, what is the inverse, what is the contrapositive? And let's take a look at this. Here's our last set of examples, and then we'll get to the puzzles. If you sleep, then I don't stay. So the converse is you swap these guys. You swap the hypothesis with the conclusion. So the converse is if what? If I don't stay, then you sleep. So in your homework, they'll give you a conditional statement. And they'll say, what is the converse? So it's just swapping those guys around. Now the inverse is not swapping them, but negating them doing the negation of both of those. So watch this. The inverse of if you sleep, then I don't stay is if you don't sleep, then I stay. So I took the negation of something with a not in it. So I'm going to write that down. If you don't sleep, comma, then I stay. And the last one, contrapositive. The contrapositive is gotten by swapping them, swapping the hypothesis with the conclusion, and negating. So the contrapositive is actually if I stay, then you don't sleep. then you don't sleep. There it is. Now I'm going to say a few things that might upset you. You've got the converse. If you take the inverse of the converse, so if you take the inverse of this, 
you get the contrapositive. And if you take the converse of the inverse, you get the contrapositive. And if you take the converse of the converse, you get the original statement. So there's all these things that we can say about that, but maybe, maybe I'm getting a little too confusing. So make sure in your homework you know how to do, how to write the converse, the inverse, the contrapositive of conditional statements. This is going to be so important in the next section. We only have one more section of logic, and then that will finish up logic if you're getting sick of logic. So let's go ahead and get to the puzzles. Okay, we have two puzzles today. One's a puzzles and one one's just a weird thing. Okay, so what do we have here? Which word does not belong? Okay, so what am I going to do for this? You may have found um, a different set of logic, logical argument to, to show something different than me, but what I'm thinking is scat doesn't belong because all the other ones have the same letters but rearranged so they all have s-t-o-p so s-t-o-p 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 and then that one actually has an a and a c so that's the word that doesn't belong maybe some of you got this okay so what about this right here this is fun. It's actually better when you have a little card. The statement on the other side of this paper is true. The statement on the other side of this paper is false. Um, I had to do it this way because this class had to be taught online and I had no choice about that. And so let's analyze this. The statement on the other side of this line is true. The statement on the other side of this line is false. Okay. Let's assume that this statement that I'm pointing to is true. If it's true, then that means when I go to the other side, that statement is true, okay? So I go over here. So from the other side, we know this is true. And what does this statement say? It says the statement on the other side of this line is false. Okay, so that's a true statement, which means over there is false. So we jump back over here. Now, because we know this is false from over here, the statement on the other side of this line is true. Well, that's a false statement which would mean that the statement on the other side would have to be false. So this is a false statement. The statement on the other side of this line is false, is a false statement, which means this statement over here has to be true and we are back in square one. So this is a contradiction and these perhaps are not statements because at the same time they are true and false. Did you see how that we went through this and it was a cycle of four. I think the paper is better because you can flip it over and usually when I give this in class I give it at the beginning and people are flipping the paper over and getting all frustrated and it's cool to see it's like why I got into teaching. So this completes section 3.3 .3.